put a sterile adapter into the tree and then we use it when we attach this stubby spout to the adapter. That way we, are, we don't introduce any uh, uh, bacteria into our tap holes. These uh, actually, these new adapters actually have check valves in them too, so that for any reason the, the vacuum would drop, the sap couldn't back up and get and get into our tap hole. It gives us a longer tap hole life. This is our double line uh, tubing system. The top line is a one inch line that carries the vacuum, helps carry vacuum. This line is under vacuum also, but it, but it also carries the sap. This is where the sap runs and flows into the pump house. We lift. We left the sap from our sub mains going north and south uh, through a, through a uh, sap ladder or spider lift, and the vacuum lifts that lifts the sap up into this double main. Everything's on tight high tensile wire, and we have fall all the way to the pump house throughout the woods. So even if we didn't have the pump running, even if, even if we didn't have vacuum, we would all get to the pump house. It's just that we're encouraging the trees to run with the vacuum. Snyder's is everything new and well fired and reverse osmosis. He's got uh, the ultimate of everything. The, the uh, reverse osmosis process uh, um, is uh, put in place mainly to save us uh, fuel on the evaporation end. This reverse osmosis machine will take about 1,000 gallon of sap an hour and uh, and take about 700 to 750 gallon of water out of it. Concentrate the sugars that are in the sap from about 2% up to about 8%. And the 8% concentrate is actually what we put in the evaporator then. So it saves us close to three-fourths of our boiling time in the evaporator. And uh, uh, saves us a lot of diesel fuel which you fire our evaporator with. It also saves us a lot of labor time. We're here, uh, we're here four, five, six hours a day now instead of uh, 15 to 18 hours a day. The 8% uh, sap that we have processed after it goes through the RO uh, gets put into an overhead tank that gravity feeds the evaporator and that, that comes in through this line right here and has to go into some preheater pipes up above that preheat the sap from about 40 degrees coming out of the woods up to about 180 or 90 degrees before it drops into the pan here to float. The first pan the sap drops into is a, a flue pan. It's, it has 24 flues across the bottom of it, uh, about seven and a half inches high, and it makes a lot more surface area that heat can get against and gives a lot more boiling capacity than a flat bottom pan would. Then it moves from the, from the flue pan into the two finishing, two front finishing pans, which are just flat bottom pans, uh, through here. This float here controls the depth in the front two pans. The syrup, of course, is most done as it, comes, as it moves this way, it continues to get more done and as it gets back and forth in these front pans, it's drawn off at this point right here. When it reaches 67% uh, sugar, we draw it off. We can set up a draw control here to uh, 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 automatically kick open whenever uh, the syrup's done. And we, we set the draw off controller up with a hydrometer which is not affected by barometric, barometric pressure. So if, once we know the syrup's done with a uh, hydrometer, we can observe what temperature that is, uh, that is, and we can set our controller up to draw a syrup whenever it reaches that temperature. Then as the temperature drops two tenths of one degree, it shuts off. So it'll drop syrup out just in a two tenths of one degree range. Gives us a real close tolerance on doneness. Takes the baby sitting out of it for us. We can be doing other things and not worry about it too much. We do have to occasionally check it because Barometric pressure can change during the day, and so uh, two or three times, two or three, four times during the day, sometimes we have to actually change the temperature by a tenth or two or three. If a storm's moving through, we might even change it a whole degree. Uh, 
We fire this whole evaporator with, with uh, soy diesel and we burn 25 gallons of diesel fuel an hour. So that's why uh, it's very important that we have that RO machine, that reverse osmosis machine, uh, reducing our fuel cost by close to three-fourths. It saved us almost $9,000 in diesel fuel last year uh, by uh, putting uh, three-fourths of water out in the field instead of or down the drain instead of in our evaporator. We use diatomaceous earth as a filter aid. It's just a white powder. It imparts no uh, uh, flavor or taste or uh, consistency changes to the syrup. It's actually approved for organic production. It helps get our syrup through the filtering process. It coats the filters, filter papers in such a way that it allows uh, us to get more syrup through the filter press before it actually plugs up and we have to change the filters. When the syrup is, uh, draws off into our canister here, uh, once we get about 10 gallon uh, of syrup ahead, raw syrup, then we actually pump it out of the canister through a filter press uh, which takes the impurities out of the syrup, uh, sugar sand and anything else that might be in there that would be objectionable to you when you're eating your syrup. Sugar sand is a real fine gritty material that uh, I always say reminds me of having a little, like I've, I've had some sandblasting sand in my mouth, it reminds me of that, real fine sand. We run it through the filter press and then we can either pump it up into our canner where we can continue to keep it hot or reheat it uh, for canning purposes in the jugs. Or if we're behind in canning, we can go to a drum and fill drums. Uh, so we don't have to, we don't want, we, we got to stay ahead of the evaporators, whatever it takes to keep ahead of the evaporator. We usually fill at least a drum a day sometimes too, as well as can, uh, can a, a lot of uh, jugs too. So a good day for us is 100 to 125 gallon of syrup made. Uh, smaller days, you, uh, depends on the runs you have each day, but uh, we've made as a, a small, I guess, as uh, 40 gallon a day and as much as 140, I think.